Hello and welcome to my channel Amankin Cloud. Today I'm going to show you how to host a static website using Azure Blob Storage and GitHub Actions. This is a simple and cost effective way to host your website with high availability and scalability. The website that I am considering for this demo is a resume, a sample resume template. Okay. I'm going to show you how that is designed and all those things. So watch, watch this video till the very end. Before we get started, make sure you have few things ready. One is an Azure account with an active subscription Two, a GitHub account. Three, a static website ready to be hosted. This is all you have to you know, have in order to complete this demonstration. All right, without wasting much time, let's get started. So before building this project, what I've done is I've already documented all the steps related to this project on my blogging site. So if you're interested in reading, so you can also visit amonkincloud.com and you will be able to read this and also achieve this project. All right. So first let me log into my Azure portal. So this is my Azure portal. Now the first thing that I need to do is to create a storage account. So let me click on storage account. If you do not find it here, you can either search here. Okay. So I'll just click on create and you'll be asked to, you know, fill in few details. Okay. So it is asking for a resource group. I'm going to create a new resource group. I'll just click on create new and I'll give this static site hosting project RG as in resource group. Okay. I'll click on okay. And it will ask you for the storage account name. I'll just give the same name with now we are good. So the name of the storage account is static site hosting project. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to leave this as the region as East US and performance standard is fine for me. Redundancy, I'm going to go with locally redundant. So this is not a production grade application. So I'll just go with the re locally redundant storage. Click on next uh, advanced. I'm going not going to touch anything here. I'll just leave everything as default networking and I'll enable this public access from all the networks because this is going to be our website. Okay. Next is data protection. Uh, uh, if you want to, you know, enable this soft deletes, you can do that. But no, I'm not at all interested in that as of now. So I'll, uh, you know, uncheck those and I'll click on encryption. I'm going with uh, Microsoft managed keys. Next tags, next review. And the last thing that you need to do is to hit on that create button. So let's wait for the validation to complete. Now I'll click on create. So it'll take a minute or two to create your storage account, right? Now, if you see here, your deployment is complete as in your storage account has been successfully created. Now let's get into the storage account. I'll just click on storage account and let me hit refresh. You would be able to see your storage account. I'll select that one. So this is my storage account. So to enable static hosting, we need to go the, with the second step that is to create the static website as in you need to enable static website hosting on your storage account. How to do that? Get into your storage account and in the left hand side, look for something called as um, static website. You find this under data management. Just click on static website here and you just need to click on enable. That's all. There is a toggle button here. Select enable and it will ask you for the index document name. Usually we will have, uh, you know, if you are having HTML, CSS and JavaScript for a static website, it will always be index.html. But depending on your, uh, you know, project, you can select the index document. So in my case, it will all it will be index.html. So I'm going to select the same thing. Error document. It is, you know, optional. If you want, you can have a separate error message. If not, you can just leave that as default and click on save. That's all. Now you have enabled your static website. So after you enable this, there will be a you know container that is uh, called dollar web that will be created in this storage account. So we'll see that. But if you see here, it will provide you the endpoint which you need to access your website. So if you copy this and paste it in your browser, you would be able to access the site. 
but as you see now we do not have any content we did not post any html or css or javascript file into that particular storage account that is why we are getting this content does not exist but now let's go ahead and uh, you know add those uh, files into this storage account so how to do that so you need this primary endpoint keep it store it with you uh, if you have a notepad you can just copy and paste it and keep it with you okay so i'll close this as of now okay so i'll come again sorry for that and now uh, we'll have to go and open container under data storage so i as i told you dollar web will be created under containers i'll click on containers and you should be able to see two folders or two containers one is dollar logs and dollar web as soon as you create a storage account dollar logs will be created which will store all the logs that are uh, required for creation of storage account okay so that will be pre present in dollar logs dollar web it will be created once the storage account is you know static website is enabled on this storage account okay so here is where we need to upload the static website files like index.html css and all those things okay so here you see this upload button you can upload the file but before going there i'll i'll show you the you know website of my uh, you know demonstration i have a folder created called resume uh, azure as i told you i'm going to host a sample resume template on this particular uh, storage account so here you see i have index.html and style.css you know ignore these two files as of now and if i click on this index.html so if you see here this is what i'm trying to host okay so let me go here i'll just quickly close that i'll just click on upload and browse for files on your local machine okay so we'll go to documents among in cloud and resume azure i'll go i'm gonna select index.html and style.css i'll just click on open and those two files will be here selected next click on just upload okay so those two files will be uploaded and you will be able to see them here okay so this completes the third step that is to create the uh, sorry to upload your website files to the storage account so now you should be able to access your website using the link that you got right so you got a url before so using that you should be able to access your site so if you forget where it is you can always come to static website and you will see the endpoint so you can copy that and you can paste it in the browser you would be able to see your data now if you see here the static site hosting project this is our pro, you know st storage account and this is what uh, we have for the container okay so this is what the resume file we have right so this completes the step four sorry step three next we need to set up the ci cd for the static website but before going to the ci cd if you want to you know if you want other people from you know other countries to access your but resume then you need to have something called as caching right so in a company like netflix and all they are streaming the video content so you you should have very less you know latency in order to achieve that we have something called as cdn in azure so let's go ahead and create a cdn profile for our website and later on we'll also go ahead and set up the ci cd for our static website so first let's go into the azure portal again i'll just click on home here now we need to create a cdn profile for that you can just uh, search for cdn and you will see front door and cdn profiles so click and open them in the new tab so i'll just open it in the new tab so this is what it is now if you see here we do not have any profile i'll just click on create so here i'll just click on uh, explore other offers i'll select that and here i'm going to select the one that is provided by azure that is azure cdn standard uh, from microsoft i'm going to select that and i'll click on continue i'm going to select the resource group that is static site hosting project rg name i'm going to give the same name region i'm keeping it as global and pricing tier i'll select microsoft cdn classic i'll select this create new cdn endpoint and i'll give a name here i'll say static okay so origin type i'll select storage static website and host name i'm gonna select 
my hostname. So this is uh, the static site hosting project. So this is our storage account and this is what we need to select. Make sure you select the proper storage account. If not, it will throw an error. Next tags, I'm not going to add any tag. Review and create and just click on create. So this is going to create you a CDN profile along with one endpoint. So with at endpoint, you will be able to access your website, right? So in the previous step, we accessed our website using the storage account endpoint, but now we will be able to access it using the CDN profile endpoint. So let's wait for that to be completed. And I will also show you how to access your website using CDN profile. All right. Now, if you see, it is saying your deployment is complete, meaning your CDN profile is completed. So just click on uh, go to resource and you will be able to see all the details about the CDN profile. Now here you will also see the endpoint also. OK, so just click on this and you will be able to find a, a URL and you can copy and paste it so that you can access your website using that endpoint. OK, so to do that, just, you know, select this endpoint host name. I'll just copy that and I'll paste it in the new tab. It might take some minutes for the, you know, uh, matching to happen, but it will be it will take some time. If you see here, it is saying page not found. It will at least take according to my knowledge, six to 10 minutes for the mapping to happen. So wait for six to 10 minutes and then retry. Now uh, let's go ahead and remove these things at the end and see if the uh, content is now available. All right, as you can see, now our uh, content is visible and we are also able to access the content using the CDN endpoint. Right. So the next step we is to integrate the CI CD. Let's say oh, the thing is so you have hosted this on the CDN profile. Everything is working fine. But later, uh, sometime later, you are, you know, skills getting added. So your um, react, you know, react as of now. But let's say you will be a cloud developer in future. So then you will also know AWS Azure and all those things. So in order to for you, in order for you to add additional skills, you need to make changes and follow the same steps again. But instead of doing that, what you can do, you can store this code on your GitHub repository. And so by the help of GitHub actions, if you make any changes to your document index.html or CSS, so automatically it will be reflected in your website too. That is what we are trying to build for that. What you need to do, create a GitHub repository. So I, uh, I think uh, most of the developers and all the, th all the people will be knowing how to create a repository. I have done the same thing here. I've created a repository with the name static web hosting on Azure CI CD. So that is what I've created. So now we'll go ahead and upload the file. You can either do it through the command line by running some GitHub uh, Git commands. But I specifically for this demonstration, I would love to upload it directly on the, uh, you know, uh, GitHub repository. So to do that, I'll just click on add file and I'll just click on upload files. So I'll choose files. So as I told you, so these are the two files that we need index.html and CSS. So I'll open that and wait till both of the files get added. OK, and now click on commit changes. So you should be able to see your files on this particular repository. OK, here is our index.html and here is our CSS file. OK, the next thing that we need to do is to set up the GitHub actions. For this, Microsoft have developed a beautiful site where uh, it is called as learn.microsoft.com and it is documented all the process. So for this thing to done, be done, so if you want to go with the GitHub actions, you need to create a service principle. For that to uh, happen, you can either, either go with the UI or you can also use Azure commands to create the service principle. So this is the command. So AZ ADSP create for role and you can give a name here and it is going to take a contributor role. And here you need to replace your subscription ID with your own subscription ID. And if you run this, you will get a sample output. So you will get all these details, client ID, client secret, subscription ID, tenant ID. These are all the secrets that your account has. 
you should not you should never share this details with anyone else outside so what you need to do you need to create a secret on your github repository i will show you how to do that but make sure that you have this and you copy that and you have it with you okay so i'll also do the same thing i have uh, in fact you know copied all the things i've noted all the things here what is the storage account name what is the resource group name what is the cdn profile name everything i have and i also have the command with me so i'm gonna run that command and i'll see you once i get the details with me okay now what i've done is i have copied that command so where to run that command so you can either use cloud shell or if you have already downloaded your azure cli on your machine you can use that also but i'll prefer cloud shell i'll click and open that if you're using cloud shell for the first time you will have to create the storage account it will automatically create in fact if you just click on you know okay so uh, you will have the storage account basically it will store all the details that you send here okay so now uh, you if you see here it has opened a shell prompt for me so i will have to just paste that command and get the details okay i'm gonna just do that and i'll hit enter and it is going to give me the details okay in the json format if you see here this is the details that i get so i'm just gonna copy this one and store it in a uh, safe place okay so after getting the details the next thing that we need to do is to store that as a secret so that our github actions can use because as i told you that information is very critical you should never share it with them with anyone in fact so for that to happen we need to create a secret so how to do that so be in your repository where you have all the code and everything just click on settings and here in, in secrets and variables, select that one. It will be a drop down. And here you need to select actions. I'm going to select actions. And here I'll select, click on new repository secret. Here you need to provide a secret name. So the secret sh name should be Azure credentials. Okay. So this, uh, this is the name, same name you should use. And here, whatever the thing that you got, the JSON document, you need to place paste the entire document here remember that and after that you can just click on add secret so i'll complete that and i'll see you okay so after creating the secret this is how it looks okay now we need to create another secret this storage account key so to access to authorize to authenticate to this particular storage account github actions requires the keys right so uh, as a user you will provide the username and password as this is a thing it will ask for the keys so to get the keys you go into the storage account under that you will find access keys select that and here you will get the keys right so you have key one and you have key two by default you'll get two keys if you click on show it will display the alphanumeric character you can copy that and you can store it so to store the keys again you need to follow the same process click on new repository here you need to provide azure storage key azure underscore storage underscore key and you need to paste the value here and click on add secret so now i'll do that okay as i told you i've added two secrets here one with storage key and other one is the azure credentials the next thing is to set up the github actions so to do that you just go into this uh, repository and here you need to create a folder which is dot github slash workflows and you need to provide the details so for that you need to create a yaml file basically github actions is your ci cd which will have the yaml code so for that so i'll show you what is the yaml code that needs to be written okay so this is the yaml file that need that needs to be added in order for your github actions to work as you see here i'm giving the name as a deploy static website and when it is going to trigger the action will be triggered whenever there is a push on your main branch right so you can add multiple branches it is a list but i'm going with the main branch so what it is going to do it is going to uh, run on ubuntu latest okay basically it will run on a container in the behind the scenes and 
it will uh, what it will do first it will go and check out this and it will log in for the azure so how do how does it log into the azure it will use the azure credentials that we stored in the secret okay so next thing that it will do is whenever the changes is made to the document it will upload it to the blob storage automatically so we did it manually for the first time but later on if there is any changes made on the github it will automatically upload it to this blob storage and you should be able to see the latest content okay so that is what it is the it is doing here next uh, it is this is the command azure command az storage blob upload batch and account name you need to provide your storage account name so edit this and provide the storage account name if you do not know you can go and check in your azure portal and account key you need to provide the key basically if you remember we created a storage key right so that it is getting from the secret so we stored it as a secret and it is getting from the secrets next we, we are going with the authentication mode as key as I'm providing the key. But if you want to give username, password or SAS token, that is also fine. So we are overwriting and we are going to use this dollar web. That is where our files are present and hyphen S, the hyphen D means destination and star, uh, I mean dot or period means everything. Okay. So that is what it is doing and next after that it is going to purge the cdn endpoint the cdn purging uh, will happen with the help of this azure command so this is what uh, it is and we need to provide the details here again we need to provide the cdn profile name and also the name here and the resource group name for the entire resource group and after completing all these things it is going to log out from the uh, github actions the github actions will log out from the azure so this is what we need to add in the github actions so to do that first let's you know just copy this content first so before adding make sure to add your information like storage account name and all those things only then go and add in your github repository now i have copied all the things now uh, to you know add this file just click on add files create a new file here as i told you it should be present in a particular directory so create uh, just type in dot github slash workflows slash and you can name it anything i'll just say front end dot yaml okay now i'll just paste all the things here all the things that I've copied, I'm just going to paste that and I'll click on commit new file. As soon as you add this file, you will see the actions that is running uh, in a behind the scene. Now, if you see here, this is what it happened. First, we created a file with frontend.yaml and automatically it will, you know, if you see here, it is in progress now, but it is going to fail because we did not give the information there. So I'll add that information, whatever my account uh, information is there. So I'll add it and I'll come back. If you see here, I have edited this file and I have filled the details, the account name, storage account name, resource group name, CDN profile name, everything I have added. Now let's go and check the actions tab here. I'll just click and open it in the new tab. If you see here, as I told in the previous step, it failed because we did not give the proper configuration. Now I have updated that frontend.yaml. So let's wait and see if we are able to commit the changes correctly or not. Okay, as you see, we have a green tick here. That means the update has been completed successfully without any errors. So if you want to debug what was the error, uh, you can just click on op uh, this one and open this build and you will be seeing all the runs that are happened. If you want to expand this and if you want to see what went wrong, you can just go over this and you can visualize that. Okay, so this is how you can uh, you know build this. Okay, now the thing is we have uh, we have completed the github actions step now what will happen if i just update this index.html file so i'll just open this i'll i'm doing it here in the github repository itself if you see here uh, we have a john doe so instead of that i'll just type in a monk in cloud so let's see what happens okay 
so i'll come all the way down and i'll commit changes so this change should be automatically picked by github actions let's see if the github actions is updating if you see here update index.html is running so after some time you should be seeing your name that is a monkey in cloud dot a monkey in cloud in your resume now we are seeing john doe right so i have updated this on my github repository that should automatically be changed in your website content as well right so that is our end goal so now let's just, you know give some time for that to complete and once you refresh this you should be able to see a monk in cloud instead of john doe okay so now if i refresh you will just see the same name but after the successful build you will be able to see a monk in cloud so let's wait for that to happen i'll just go to actions here let's see if this completes successfully or not okay if you see now the update has been done so if i just go ahead to the static site amc.azureedge.net so if i just refreshed it i should be able to see a monk in cloud instead of john doe so if you see here it has been replaced right so this is what we needed and we are getting the same result now if you ask me if i can add my own you know a custom domain instead of this you can absolutely do that so how to do that you can come to your cdn profile and if you see here uh, so now if i just open this one so you can link it with a custom domain if you have your own domain let's say for example a monkey cloud.com if you want a link you can just click on that and you can add your custom host name here and it will be redirected right so that's how you do it or you can also create a cname record and map this value in the record that you create right so that's how you can achieve this project okay so that's all i had to uh, you know show you in in this particular project i hope you learned something from this project if you are you know also trying to build the same project let me know in the comment section what you are trying to do and where are you facing the error i'll usually reply to all the comments on my channel so that's it for this video if you are liking the content that i'm creating please consider subscribing and share it among your friends. Thank you and I will see you in the next one.